Hello, hello. Everyone, welcome. Good morning. Welcome back from your weekend. Hope it was great. My name is Grant Finley Sherris, and welcome to the digital marketing webinar focused on how to get your website showing up on the first page of Google. This is the second of many webinars that Park Bench will be hosting on marketing with an emphasis on hyper-local, neighborhood-focused marketing and in the digital space because Park Bench is a digital company. This is what we're good at. Uh, so my name is Grant finley Sherris, I'm the CEO of parkbench.com. And right now we're the leader at building websites for neighborhoods. We have 10 times more content than Google and Facebook, and we continue to add more. Uh, we are at least 50% more accurate uh, than Google and Facebook, uh, and we continue to better organize and categorize our local data. And because we optimize our content so well, we show up on the first page of search engines for hundreds of local keywords. As a result of our traffic, content, and search engine rankings, uh, we are already ranked higher than 99.99% of websites in the U.S. and Canada, something we're really excited about. Um, and specifically with regarding to SEO, we got hundreds of local keywords uh, that show up on the first page of search engines. For example, you can Google North Richvale News, Ronsonsville Schools, Danforth, Realtor, Liberty Village Deals, uh, Dental Office in Liberty Village, uh, Leslieville Events. These are names of neighborhoods and the content that we have uh, that we are really good at. And because of that, we're on the first page for. Um, SEO is all about long term. It's all about growth and progress. So we have lots of other keywords that are on the second page, the third page. And you just start to, if you target your website well, you'll start to see yourself rising up the ranks um, from page 10 all the way to page 1, just like we are. So uh, we're really fortunate that all this success has happened in the last 19 months. That's all. That's how, how much we've been uh, alive for. Uh, and our SEO success is largely due to our SEO specialist on staff, um, also known as a growth hacker, uh, who can help uh, you grow your online presence um, and who I've told to unleash his secrets. So there he is. His name is Jordan St. Jacques. And he's been doing digital marketing for over 11 years. Uh, he was one of the first people in the world to get over 1 million MySpace friends. Uh, he's been doing social media marketing for over seven years for lots of different companies and different industries. He's done email marketing for over four years, search engine optimization for over three years. Uh, he's, he's a master of marketing automation. It's kind of what we've come to know him for. And since he started with Parkbench, our SEO and traffic has seen increases of 30 to 60% a month, right? So again, if there's someone that you want to listen to, to get answers about SEO and how to drive traffic to your website, it is Jordan. Uh, so now he's building a team around him at Parkbench. And, and now... You are uh, the first group of people who are going to be hearing about our new services. So we've been building neighborhood websites, um, but now we're able to offer SEO, social media, and lead generation services uh, headed up by Jordan. Uh, so you guys are some of the first people to ever hear about that, which means that when the, you guys get the 25% off promo code at the end of this webinar, that's going to apply for not just uh, Park Bench neighborhood websites, if you want them, it's going to apply for our SEO, social media, and lead generation services. So that's really exciting, um, and uh, I'm excited to hear what Jordan has to say. I hope you are too. So without further ado, I will be passing this webinar over to Jordan, and I am available to answer questions in the control panel. So the go to webinar control panel that you likely see on the, the right side of your screen or somewhere, there's a question section. So if you have any questions that you want to ask uh, during the presentation, I am here to answer. Jordan's taught me a thing or two. Thanks, Jordan. Take it away. Thank you, Grant. Diving right into it, the topic of SEO uh, is extremely difficult, of course. Out of all the disciplines, uh, Etc. It's uh, it is the one that requires most education to uh, to master. 
Um, it's been estimated that approximately 10,000 hours to really master SEO is what it takes. Um, and even once you uh, think you've figured it out, uh, you still have to keep reading your journals because of the fact that Google, uh, especially, will always change things. Uh, you can learn practical action steps to take within one webinar that can increase your SEO and improve your marketing strategy, uh, but it's not going to make you a master. You have to keep at it constantly. It's a very, very, uh, perhaps the biggest game of cat and mouse uh, that we have in the online digital marketing world today. Um, during the course of this webinar, I'm going to talk uh, about Google a lot, but because Google has a worldwide market share of approximately 67%, uh, it's it's one of those things where Google is almost synonymous with SEO these days. It's also worth considering Bing and Yahoo as well because the three of them combined pretty much make up 97% of the world market. However, because Google has such a dominant position, uh, like I said, if we talk about Google, we're talking about SEO in general by default because, let's face it, Google is the big dog when it comes to SEO analysis. The mystery. No one ever really knows what, uh, you know, 100% what signals rank and what percentages, things like that, because let's, uh, let's face it, it's, um, it's something that Google changes all the time. It's a highly guarded secret with respect to the algorithm, and it's always changing. In fact, here's a little insider tip. Uh, if you know, if, like, for example, uh, if you are working at Google and you know uh, or have access to uh, the exact algorithm rankings, uh, the formula, things like that. It's probably one of the high, uh, the most, the most powerful, the most, uh, uh, you know, the highest NDA, non-disclosure agreement that you're ever going to sign in the world. I mean, it's uh, between Google's NDA and Apple's NDA. I mean, they're, you know, some of the strongest contracts known to be in existence in the industry. Uh, as I said before, other search engines emulate Google. Um, Yahoo is actually powered by Bing, which emulates Google. So you can see that, you know, even if we're talking about other search engines, eventually this all makes its way back to Google, uh, which is why, of course, that people talk about Google in synonymous uh, aspect with SEO, SEO in general. State of affairs. These days, most realtor websites are not optimized. A good portion of them are at least two generations behind, and Really, if you do a Google search on real realtor or real estate or you know real estate broker or real estate agent or something like that, and just actually take a look at say the top ten websites that come up for realtors, you'll see like seven or eight of them out of the ten are just going to be like these horrible websites, and you you know the user experience is bad. You can tell the thing was probably written you know like ten years ago, if not back in the days of GeoCities. Uh, and it's, um, it, it's just not a very good state of affairs, of course. Um, going beyond the, uh, you know, the fact that a lot of these websites are not you know, optimized for user experience, behind the scenes, you know, if, you take, if you pull away the curtain, you, you'll also see that a lot of these websites are not optimized for mobile and they're not optimized for speed. And those two factors are new. Uh, factors within the Google ranking universe that really, really need to be paid attention to because if you're not optimized for mobile and speed these days, you are going to take a Google penalty. All right, so just remember, remember that. That'll come up uh, again and again within this webinar. Conclusion, there seems to be a lack of respect for SEO within the real estate world. Uh, I'm sure that's not a, a you know a, an intentional thing. It's maybe just a a lack of knowledge, and if uh, realtors, uh, you know, can educate themselves or be educated uh, along the way, then uh, it'll, you know, it'll be a competitive advantage. Because uh, as uh, as I've just said, uh, most realtors aren't really optimized. So if you can actually learn something that helps you optimize your digital footprint, then you're just going to be better off in terms of competing for those listings against uh, the other uh, community-minded realtors in your neighborhood. So remember that as we go along. What we do know, Google's crawler is always on. Uh, and uh, if anybody uh, remembers the days of old, uh, the reason why that's important now is because back in the day, what used to have to happen is if you wanted your website listed by Google, you used to have to stick in 
your URL into some sort of a form that re, you know a request form to ask Google or the other search engines to index your bot. Yahoo was actually famous for that. They uh, if you didn't fill out the form, Yahoo didn't see your site because Yahoo was actually more of a uh, you know glorified directory as opposed to a true search engine. But the Google bot now, uh, and Google bot of course is the name of their crawler. Uh, it's the most famous uh, crawler out there, and it was the subject of the um, thesis that was done by the two Google creators, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. They called it the Google Bot, and that term still survives to this day. So the Google Bot crawls from site to site and discovers new sites by processing HTML and SRC URLs, then sorting them. Uh, and if you uh, know anything about code, then you'll know that what I mean by HTML and SRC URLs is that let's say you're uh, processing the a tag a href tag within HTML, uh, which is a, a really basic HTML tag that a lot even non-coders will uh, will know how to use. Um, Google sees that and they will uh, register those HTML tags, especially when they point to other sites, and that's what's called a backlink. And uh, of course, the SRC URLs are for when you uh, actually embed images into your sites and pull them from URLs as opposed to uh, you know hosting them directly in your uh, in your server host the Google bot has a 10 megabyte limitation per site all right that's important now that means essentially that Google is going to crawl a certain amount of data of code data within your site and if you have messy code uh, you know, code in there that doesn't need to be in there, then you run the risk of, of actually having website files that are over 10 megabytes. And if that's the case, then Google is not going to see part of your site, meaning you're not going to get as high of an overall page rank score as you would if you optimize your code and stripped out anything that you really don't need. Um, these days, in the last, say, 12 to 18 months, uh, the Googlebot has been estimated to now recognize JavaScript functions and Ajax calls. Now, no one really knows in what capacity that the JavaScript and Ajax calls are recognized, uh, but there is a, uh, a general consensus that this, uh, this recognition of JavaScript and Ajax is an ongoing project within the Googlebot universe. So it's, it's one of those things that is constantly changing and you've got, just got to keep on... Uh, you know, uh, doing your own, you know, empirical analysis as you go along, or if you're uh, dealing with an SEO guy, just make sure he's paying attention to the empirical uh, uh, evidence that comes his way. Breaking SEO down. All right, so for the layman's terms, for people who are not tech-related, um, the SEO uh, universe can be broken down into two classifications. On-site SEO relates to the code of your own website, Inbound SEO relates to the off-site content and other items. Uh, it's pretty simple uh, initial breakdown, easy to understand, uh, on-site and off-site. Right? So on-site means your code. Off-site is talking about backlinks that refer back to your site, uh, articles that might be posted on external sites such as Blogger or Tumblr, things like that. Uh, and it's uh, it's one of those things uh, where you know for people who are not technically uh, oriented, uh, it's a nice starting point. Let's say. So let's start with on-site SEO. Site speed: how fast your pages load on average. All right. As I mentioned before a few slides ago, Google now recognizes site speed, and they rank it as part of the SEO signals universe. The, um, the reason why they do that is, uh, you know, in layman's terms, they, what, they, what they state uh, publicly is that if your site is slow, it takes away from the user experience of whoever is browsing your site. So they will give better rankings to sites that are faster as opposed to sites that are slower simply because of the fact that they think that people these days want to see and view and experience faster load times, which of course is true. I mean, you know, the, just uh, think back to your experiences online and how often have you waited for a slow site to load, right? If you don't have to wait for it, I mean, let's face it, if it's, it takes longer than, than a couple of seconds to load, you're out of there. Mobile optimization is uh, another big uh, ranking feature uh, that's been new in the last, say, six months. 
Um, if your uh, site is not optimized to be viewed responsibly on a mobile device, then it's uh, it, it, you're going to take a penalty from Google because uh, obviously these days it's not just about the desktop computer anymore. It's also about smartphones. It's also about uh, tab tablets, things like that. So Google wants to make sure that you pay attention to how your site appears uh, over a wide range uh, and variety of devices. Relevance. This is another big uh, topic within the Googleverse these days. Is the content on your site focused on a topic or all over the place? And that doesn't necessarily mean just the content that the uh, that the user sees. It's also about how you structure your meta tags uh, and uh, and code issues like that, because uh, that can play a big uh, a big uh, factor in how Google sees your website. So. It's, it's one of those things where if Google can't see it, then Google can't rank it. And that's why it's important for you and your coder team, if, you're, uh, if you have a team for that, to make sure that your uh, things like meta tags and description, descriptions and alt tags for your images, things like that, are, are always done properly. And this, to be honest with you, this is the difference between a, uh, a good coder and a bad coder, is how much uh, attention to detail do they pay. Uh, duplication is your content at least 75% unique. Uh, if you're um, if you're scraping off some other sites and posting it on your site and passing it off as your own content, you are going to take a penalty these days. Um, you know, maybe that's something that you want to do just to make sure that your clients are reading it. But if you're posting this content in hopes of getting an SEO boost you're actually going to take uh, a penalty on that because Google, what, what they do is they crawl content and the, and match it on a percentage basis as to how much duplication there is. And the original article, uh, because obviously Google, in this case, attaches a date stamp to every piece of content that they crawl. So if your content is uh, is duplicated off of other content out there, then you take the penalty if you're the one scraping it. Now, if someone is scraping off you and posting it as their own content, they will take the penalty. Your SEO score will stay the same. What to do if your site is too slow? Check your code. Have your webmaster take a look. Uh, strip out code that you just don't need, uh, especially a lot of legacy code from years past. Uh, is uh, you know there's a lot of uh, you know layouts and things like that that just take far too much code and these days especially with HTML5 and the new standards you can actually uh, take uh, a lot of that code out there without sacrificing any of the functionality of your site so just make sure that that's something you pay attention to uh, but most often your so your slow site speed is due to the fact that your website is hosted on a shared host now, these shared hosts are notoriously slow. I mean, let's face it, if you've got a shared host on some site, on some service like GoDaddy, and GoDaddy is packing like a thousand websites onto the same server, you, your site is going to slow down. I mean, that's just uh, simple digital physics. The, um, uh, it's always better to have uh, a VPS, uh, a private server, um, you know, like in the cloud, let's say, and I'll get to that in a couple of slides. What to do if your site is not mobile responsive? Um, old websites are likely to not be mobile re responsive because, let's face it, they were written in the days when there were no smartphones and there were no tablets. Remember, we only, uh, you know, it's only been, it's been less than a decade since, uh, since mobile devices have really, really taken off with respect to the web. I mean, nobody really cared about how a website looked back in the days when we were all using Motorola Razor flip phones. It's only when the iPad, uh, sorry, the iPhone and the iPad came out, and then of course their Android equivalents, that, uh, that we actually uh, really started to care how our websites looked because we actually had a mobile browser experience uh, that was finally uh, worthy of a mobile device. So, they're, you know, for the most part, old websites are not mobile responsive, which means you're going to take that Google hit. Um, consider investing in a new website. It's that important. If a new website um, is not feasible for you, then, you know, unfortunately, the, the restructuring job within your code might take even more time and cost more money than if you actually just commission a new website. 
Uh, plus, old design factors are not uh, up to date, and if you keep your, your current design, which is obviously older in nature, uh, and simply just make it responsive, you, you're still not going to you know, get the user experience up to where it needs to be here in 2015. Don't get bogged down with optimizing for old devices and operating systems. Focus on the desktop, the tablet, and the latest smartphones. Uh, you know, like for example, a lot of people make the mistake that they still have to optimize for older versions of Internet Explorer, which is probably one of the worst things that you can do. So concentrate on the new versions. If the if you're up to date for the newest Internet Explorer, the newest Chrome, and the newest Firefox, and of course, uh, you know the most recent versions of the tablets and the smartphones, then you'd be all right. What is site relevance? Semantic HTML done properly gives rise to the Googlebot giving your site a relevance value. And when I say semantic HTML, that's what I was talking about before with meta tags and alt tags and things like that. If you coordinate the text that you're going to use in those tags, then Google is going to give a high relevance factor for your code, and you're going to get an SEO boost. Um, proper coding of semantic HTML takes longer, but is worth the extra time and energy, especially if you want that SEO boost. Uh, relevance is given a greater weight in recent Google algorithm updates. Uh, in fact, a lot of sites who are not relevant or haven't coded their sites to be relevant within that semantic HTML structure have taken penalties. And can you imagine if all of a sudden you're, you know, one day you're ranking on page one for Google and then the next day you're down to page three or four? I mean, you know, there are businesses that have gone out of business because they've taken those SEO penalties and, uh, and have suffered in terms of their business aspects because of them. What do, you, what to do if your site has duplication? Um, so here's a nice little tool for you that we use every day at Parkbench to test for duplicate content. It's called copyscape.com. And uh, essentially, you can just uh, stick in a text passage, and Copyscape will return to you results that test out uh, your content along the web to see if it's been duplicated. Whichever site copied the other will take the SEO penalty, as I mentioned previously. If your content is original, don't worry about it. If you copied off another site, delete the duplicated content ASAP. Google will crawl your site within a matter of weeks, and the penalty that you took for putting up duplicate content will be removed. So you don't actually have to do anything else besides uh, delete or replace the duplicated content. Uh, Google will eventually see that you fixed up your site, and your page rank score will go up accordingly. Here's a few handy tools for you. Measure your site speed at tools.pingdom.com slash FTP. Uh, Pingdom actually has a lot of different kinds of SEO type tools. Uh, it's worth bookmarking and checking out for you know a few minutes to see what they can do for you. Here's another link. I'm not going to bother repeating it because it's too long, but it allows you to test out mobile optimiz optimization. And it's provided directly by Google, so it's pretty much the best tool out there for testing uh, mobile optimization. Uh, last tool is seositecheckup.com, which is used worldwide. It's one of the most famous free tools out there, and uh, you can execute a complete on-site measurement with respect to SEO and see how you are doing. Um, it's a free tool, but like I said uh, before, they'll probably pitch you on some sort of uh, uh, service upgrade or something like that. Just you know, ignore the service upgrade pop-up announcement or whatever and just you know use their free tool for what you can. Over 150 on-site SEO ranking signals in total exist within the ranking signals Googleverse. Uh, as I said before, nobody really knows which signals rank and what percentage uh, and uh, you know even if you do figure it out with extensive hours and hours and hours of testing, it'll change eventually because Google changes this stuff all the time. On-site SEO is vital to your overall page rank on Google. It's, uh, like I said, it's one of the two main categories you cannot ignore. It. Proper SEO coding takes more time, costs more, but if being on Google Page 1, especially in the top half of Google Page 1, is important to you, you can't avoid it. You need to consider on-site SEO. All right, let's get over to inbound SEO. The three pillars of inbound SEO, content, backlinks, and social with a sub-channel of social media channels, all right? 
contents straddles the on-site SEO category as well. I mean, let's face it, if you have a piece of content written such as an article, you know, similar type of, uh, of piece of content, then you can use it on your own site, which is on-site SEO, and you can also post it in other places on the web, which of course is inbound SEO. Uh, backlinks, these are still very important. Don't let anybody say otherwise. Uh, they are, um, uh, you know, they make up uh, the backbone of the Googlebot. As I said before, they crawl, uh, the Googlebot crawls all kinds of sites and they register all kinds of links and they discover your site if it's linked to another site. So that's how backlinks work. Social. Both, at, both Facebook and now Twitter postings are viewed as, uh, as ranking signals. And uh, again, these, these aspects uh, for Facebook and Twitter are still relatively new. So Google is, is doing a lot of uh, empirical testing on, uh, on you know, how much they should rank these signals. But it's been proven that Facebook and Twitter uh, you know, postings, profiles, things like that will appear in Google uh, SERPs, which uh, SERP stands for Search Engine Result Placement. And of course you know this because uh, let's say you search for something or someone, you will see a Twitter profile and a Facebook profile uh, and or uh, within the Google results. Uh, you also see that for LinkedIn as well. So you can see that these social networks are being, uh, being uh, crawled and being ranked as well. Now, what's not known quite as much is how much the postings, like wall post on Facebook or a tweet within Twitter, are being indexed right now. And we know that there's heavy, heavy testing on that. And we know that any day now, if it hasn't started to happen already, the tweets are going to be viewable within SERPs, uh, Google SERPs, uh, you know, and uh, so, of course, they're ranking signals as well. And if you place a link within, um, uh, within a tweet or a wall post, uh, the word on the streets uh, in the unofficial uh, SEO community that's, you know, for people who don't work at Google uh, is that uh, tweets and wall posts, uh, if you have links in there, they're actually ranked as a backlink as well. So that's, that's actually a pretty major development within the whole SEO uh, Googleverse. Social media channels should not be ignored uh, especially with respect to their own search engines because they are search engines within their own rights. So how many times when you're looking for a person have you avoided Google and just gone right to Facebook or gone right to LinkedIn or gone right to Twitter and used their own internal search engines to actually uh, find the person you're looking for? Uh, alternatively, sometimes these uh, social media search engines have been used to search for kinds of content as well. So even though the, there's no way that those search engines, search engines will ever rival uh, Google or Bing or Yahoo, uh, they should still be taken a look at when you're planning your whole search engine strategy uh, because they are going to be used, uh, especially by heavy social media users. Uh, so pay attention to that. Content. The more the better. Do not duplicate. We already talked about that. Keyword density, no more than 5% per blog. Uh, this used to be an old trick back in the days of early Google where you just jam your keyword into an article as much as you can without any rhyme or reason uh, and, uh, and get a cheap SEO boost because of that. But these days, uh, Google will see that. And so you have to, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to go in moderation. It's kind of like eating ice cream. You eat too much, you're going to get fat. You eat a little bit and you're going to have a, a pleasurable enjoyment experience. I'm talking about personal uh, empirical evidence, of course. Um, search engines recognize synonyms. So if you uh, have a, um, a topic that you're discussing, uh, one of the ways to get around that keyword density limit is to use synonyms of the keyword itself, right? And it won't actually give you a penalty if you go over that 5% figure if you're using synonyms. Rather, you will take an SEO boost simply from a relevance point of view. Research your desired keywords beforehand and test for search volume and competition. Um, let's face it, if you're just a little uh, single uh, unit motel and you're trying to go after some sort of major keyword like Toronto hotels, you're going to be fighting against the, uh, the Hiltons, the Hyatts, the Marriott's of the world. And there's no way that you're going to be able to compete against them simply because uh, these companies have war rooms of like 20, 30 people in the SEO department. 
posting articles, posting reviews, posting comments all day long. And it's, uh, it's just one of those things where it's just impossible. Whereas if you uh, take your single chain motel and go, you know, execute a strategy of local SEO where you're going after the words such as like uh, Scarborough Motel or Kingston Road Motel, which is of course a street within Scarborough, then you're more likely to rank on page one with that choice of keyword rather than something where you're fighting a Fortune 500 company. So, you know, just, um, you know, be, uh, you know, attach some reality to your keyword choice uh, and make sure that you test out for, you know, your search volume and search competition and choose a keyword that you have uh, a reasonable chance of ranking for. Content usage. So, obviously, you know, uh, you've done this content. What do you, how do you use it? So, you post articles in your own site. You post articles on various other sites that are on the web, uh, Blogger, Tumblr, um, industry-specific websites, things like that. Engage in longer comments on other people's posts. Um, you know, this might be a little bit of a pain in having to, to do this activity, but those comments are also ranked within uh, SEO. So you might want to engage in a comment program. Perhaps it's something you can pass off to an intern or something like that. Uh, but definitely you should consider that within your SEO strategy. If possible, always try and include a backlink to your site on all off-site posts and comments. As I said before, backlinks uh, are still an essential part of the Googlebot structure. So anytime you can get a backlink in there without appearing overly obvious, go ahead and do so. Okay, so some tools with respect to content. Um, there's a big article from Moz with respect to keyword targeting, density, etc. cetera. Uh, Moz is one of the biggest SEO uh, service companies out there. They've got some great tools. They're a little on the expensive side, but if you have uh, a business that really re needs to rank, then the Moz tool is pretty much the best out there. Google's own internal keyword research tool within any AdWords account uh, is free. And uh, essentially, just go to adwords.google.ca slash keyword planner. And, uh, and that keyword research tool is, is one of the best out there. Uh, and again, it's from Google itself, so obviously you can trust it. Best free tool for duplication tests. We already talked about it, but here's the link again for a little bit of redundancy. Copyscape.com. Okay, so backlinks. Don't be fooled. These are still and always will be important. Uh, now, the thing with backlinks is that quality, not quantity, is the most important thing. Um, every site has a value that's given to it from Google. It's called PageRank. And PageRank, uh, the score goes from 0 to 10, 10 being the highest. So what you are striving to do here is to get your backlinks, your articles, things like that, on sites that have a page rank of 4 or higher. Very important. If you have your backlinks on... Uh, sorry, if you have your backlinks on page rank sites of two and three, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not just it's just not going to give you as much of a boost. Now, if you have your bank backlinks on ones and zeros, then you can sometimes take a penalty, especially with the page rank zero sites. So it's um, it's it, you know it's not quantity, it's quality. Strive for backlinks. Oh, I already talked about that. Sorry, skip over that one. Low quality backlinks, as I mentioned, result in penalties now and. Uh, anybody who follows the journals will have remembered from a couple of years ago where all these um, backlink networks uh, that originated out of Poland specifically, uh, you know, thousands of sites took penalties uh, when Google made changes in their uh, SEO algorithm, and it was directly for that reason, for having low-quality backlinks. So you've got to pay attention to that. It's, uh, you know, backlink uh, developments uh, and building can be a long-term process, but once you get your backlinks uh, up there, uh, that's, uh, that's SEO benefits that will last you for a long time. Social media. Facebook and Twitter are now indexed by Google, including actual tweets and wall posts. Profiles have been viewable in Google for some time now. Hashtags are also a signal within SEO rankings, although we don't know specifically what, uh, what uh, weight is given to hashtags. It's one of those newer things with Google still experimenting with various values. URLs posted on social are considered backlinks as well, uh, as I mentioned before. Here's some tools. Hootsuite is still the best dashboard out there and has a decent scheduling functionality. 
Uh, one of the great things about Hootsuite is they're an active company, and recently uh, they've continued with that philosophy and added Instagram scheduling integration. It's very, very, very progressive on the part of Hootsuite. Um, as uh, most people uh, who have ever engaged with Instagram know, uh, Instagram has always been a device-oriented social network and hasn't really opened up their API very much. So in other words, if you wanted to post something, you always had to go to Instagrams uh, through your phone. And for marketers who spend most of their day at a desk uh, and sometimes who want to do uh, tasks, execute tasks in bulk, that could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So now you can do it all through Hootsuite, uh, making life easier on anybody who uses Hootsuite with respect, to, with respect to Instagram. Buffer is a close second to Hootsuite. It doesn't have Instagram, Instagram integration yet. Uh, but the design of Buffer is uh, preferable to a lot of people, especially people who like a minimalist design. Uh, that's what people are saying about Buffer. So you might want to check it out. Um, you know, for 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 dive in the wool hoot sweeters, they probably won't switch. But for some people who who like a simpler solution, Buffer Buffer may be for you. With respect to metrics, uh, we use Sprout Social. A little on the expensive side, but their metrics are really good. Probably the best in the industry with, with respect to social. Um, give them a try. They have a trial version, and if your business is at the point where you need those metrics uh, to make uh, database da or data-based decisions, uh, then perhaps Sprout Social is for you. Social media search engines. Um, th they don't affect Google. Uh, but you should still optimize for them. Facebook search engine pulls results from the web as well as internal. You can see that by the, the variety of options uh, in the tab function on, you know, when you're searching for something on Facebook. Uh, Twitter search engine is robust as well, uh, but it only brings back results within Twitter. LinkedIn's search engine is also recommended, recommended to be optimized for. The, uh, the LinkedIn uh, is similar to Twitter, uh, with respect to the search engine, it, uh, it only pulls results from within LinkedIn, but let's face it, when you're searching for a person, LinkedIn is the go-to site these days. Analytics. Uh, I suggest your starting point, for, well, I, for the starting point for anybody, really, with respect to analytics, is to use Google Analytics, uh, their own internal tool for, uh, for analyzing uh, SEO-related factors. Expect a learning curve to become a Google Analytics master. It's uh, it's not an easy uh, it's not an easy site to learn in detail. I mean, there's a few things that you will see on the surface uh, that are pretty easy to understand, but to drill down into the various features uh, within Google Analytics uh, underneath uh, the basic summary dashboard um, takes a little bit of a learning curve. I would say that. Uh, uh, any person with uh, a decent understanding of the internet and how sites work can probably get through it in, a, in an entire weekend. If you're like me and you want more details than Google Anal Analytics gives, then check out a site called Piwik. Now, they're from Sweden, which is uh, the definition of that name. I mean, I know it sounds like some sort of an Ikea couch or something like that, but it's, uh, it's actually an open source uh, analytics program that gives more information uh, than Google's analytics program does. I like it because it tells me what kind of devices people are browsing from, what kind of operating systems they're using, and I believe that Google Analytics is going to, uh, is, has either started catching up to Piwik in this area or is, uh, is almost finished catching up, but Piwik was the leader in, in uh, giving data uh, statistics uh, on what kind of uh, devices and operating systems that people were using when they hit your site. Um, the only thing with Piwik is that you have to be a little bit of a coder for that because it's an open source script that you host on your own server. Now it's not really difficult to uh, to set up, but if you've never actually um, set up a site uh, and connected it to a, a MySQL database before, uh, then probably you just get somebody to do it for you who knows how to do these things. All right, what to watch for with respect to key performance indicators, otherwise called KPIs. Uh, and these are coming right from the dashboard within, uh, within Google uh, Analytics. Monthly users indicates how many unique visitors went to your website. Now, that's a basic 
uh, a basic uh, piece of data, but it's an important one. How many, you know, let's face it, it's very basic. How many visitors are coming to your site? Everybody wants to know that. Bounce rate indicates how often users went to your website and left without browsing around. Uh, that's not to be confused with an email bounce. With an email bounce, you send an email and it either arrives at its destination or it bounces back to you because that email address is inactive. Uh, the bounce rate on a website um, is, is sort of counterintuitive to that. It means that somebody did arrive on your website, because let's face it, your website does exist, but they were so uninterested with what your website had to offer that they left right away. That's referred to in the website business as a bounce, uh, a bounce rate uh, with respect to websites. If that value is uh, is low, then obviously you're doing something what you know good, and people are staying on your website. If that value is very very high, then you know you've got to improve something because nobody's really getting any value out of your website, so they're leaving right away. Pages per session indicates how engaged your users are. The higher, the better. Uh, that means that people are arriving on your website and they're surfing around going from page to page. This works, of course, in conjunction with bounce rate. If people are have a higher page per session, uh, then your bounce rate is going to be low. Uh, it's just they go hand in hand. Average session duration is the third metric that works uh, alongside bounce rate and pages per session. Uh, if your average session duration time is higher, uh, then it's another indicator that your users are more engaged with your website. Some more details about Google, Google Analytics. Uh, if you drill down into the acquisition section, uh, you can tell where your traffic is coming from. And this is important, obviously, to optimize uh, different channels, uh, you know, that go alongside with your website, to, you know, in hopes of driving uh, more traffic to the website. Acquisition tells you where your traffic is coming from, but it breaks down. And the four categories that are uh, the main categories with respect to acquisition is referral traffic. That means, you know, it's coming to you from an online source outside of Google. Direct traffic is from things like emails, P you know, links within PDFs, etc. Organic traffic is coming to you from Google sites. And that could be a search engine. It could be a Google property such as Maps or uh, Google Drive or Google... Um, uh, Google Blogger, because Blogger is owned by Google, it could be any of those. And then the fourth main category for acquisition is social traffic, some links within social media. Like if you were surfing Facebook and you clicked a link and arrived at a certain site, uh, that would be registered as traffic uh, uh, that comes from social. All right, so summary. Let's wrap it up with a few observations. Cost-benefit analysis. How are you performing versus your competitors? Uh, there are a lot of tools out there, some of them of which I've mentioned already, that allow you to test your performance versus your competition. Um, they don't give you everything that your competition uh, is doing online, of course, because of privacy reasons or because they just can't do it uh, technically, but you can see keywords that your competition is performing for. Uh, so, if, in other words, if you want to do some negative SEO with respect to your competition, uh, this is your starting place to, you know, to analyze and start uh, planning your strategy. What's your expected ROI on an increase in, F in SEO efforts? I mean, let's face it, this is all about business performance. So if you, uh, if you can somehow quantify how uh, a move to page one on Google is going to affect your business, uh, then you can measure your ROI pretty easily. And if the ROI is positive, then Really, this is a no-brainer to, you know, to either, you know, start paying more attention to SEO yourself or to increase your budget to whoever your SEO provider is. Ask yourself this one question, though, and this applies especially for realtors. What would one lost sale cost you? One lost listing, one lost sale. Ask yourself what your commission would have been on that lost sale. And if that's a you know, uh, a big amount, a serious amount, as it is for some, you know, some realtors, then really this becomes a no-brainer. You've got to pay more attention to your SEO. So wrap up, watch out for snake oil SEO salespeople. There's a lot of talkers out there. You know, a lot of people that will come to your door and say, oh, yeah, we can put you on page one within a week or within two weeks. 
Good SEO is not an easy goal to achieve, and it requires a patient, dedicated, and highly knowledgeable person at the wheel to, to, uh, to both achieve and maintain. No one can give you long-term results immediately. Count on waiting at least 30 to 60 days for your rankings to increase. And, uh, and there's just no other way around that. Anybody who tells you that anything different is really just full of crap, as we like to say. Park Bench Neighborhoods websites. Make it easier to rank for your local keyword searches. So here's a couple of screenshots, uh, this slide and the next slide, of the kind of the results that we've achieved through our neighborhood websites. Uh, now take a look at, first, the keyword search term that I used for one of our original clients, a guy named Paul Vallis out in the Danforth in Toronto, otherwise commonly known as Greektown. Now that term, the neighborhood and the word realtor, I mean, that is such a basic term within Google that to be able to rank for that term is, is well, to be honest, it's pretty significant. Uh, not that I'm trying to pump my own uh, horn or anything like that, but, uh, I mean, if you think about it and you ask you around to your friends and things like that, uh, to people you trust, they'll tell you the same thing. That's a very basic search term, and to rank for that basic search term is a significant accomplishment. Now, look where we rank. Number one, not page one, slot one. You can see right there, Danforth, Greektown, Toronto Neighborhood News, et cetera, et cetera. That's a park bench URL. So our community-minded websites uh, that we provide to realtors all across Canada and now in California and, again, you know, later on into the rest of the USA, uh, the SEO value of these sites works. It's pretty obvious. There it is, slot one. So somebody from the Greektown, let's say they hop online, they type in their search term, and look at the first thing they see. Also, uh, for Mr. Vallis, what we've done is we've uh, executed uh, and submitted a, um, a Google My Business listing, which is massive SEO value for local search. So this is, this is actually two accomplishments uh, all in the same screenshot here. Number one slot, which you see in the main part of Google, and then over on the right, the Google My Business listing, which we actually took some time to submit for him and uh, of course, there he is. Now, here's another example, not using the keyword realtor, but using one of the three big factors of the Park Bench community minded websites the word events. Because uh, let's face it, if you take a look at Park Bench, you will see that our community minded websites all revolve around news, events, and deals. So here's another neighborhood within Toronto, Old Millside, combined with the word events, which is one of the big three pillars of Park Bench. And that search term, as you can see, has uh, resulted in the first two slots for that search term being park bench URLs. So again, it's one of those things. It's not, it's not page one, it's slot one, and in this case, slot two as well. So it's, um, uh, you know, again, just another example how the SEO benefits of having a park bench community-minded neighborhood website uh, really have more value than just, you know, providing a portal for your customers to read. They also help your SEO. Now here's a, uh, a little bit of a diagram on the breakdown of uh, if you try to do one of these community-minded neighborhood sites on your own as, uh, as opposed to the value that you will save if you deal with us here at Park Bench. Um, take a look at the middle column, which is, of course, the first column that indicates uh, a rough a price approximation as if, of if you tried to do this yourself. You're looking at an upfront cost of anywhere between twenty to $24,000 upfront, and then a yearly ongoing cost of anywhere between fifteen dollars to $20,000. I mean, we're talking, a, you know, pretty much the amount of a new car every year just to maintain the, uh, this thing. Whereas because of the aggregation and the proprietary technology that Park Bench has put together, uh, we can do that same task in a fraction of the cost. I mean, we're talking, we're talking a 66% saving, if not greater, depending on the size of your neighborhood. Uh, another benefit is, is that you can leverage uh, the investment of other realtors within the Park Bench network and get better SEO results for less money. 
Uh, that is that we have all these realtors, I think it's over 200 now if I'm not mistaken, uh, that are on the Park Bench uh, ecosystem. They all have their own community-minded uh, websites within parkbench.com. And because of so many realtors in so many areas, it's just an overall SEO uh, score benefit. Um, if you want to take a look at the benefits of a neighborhood website, we have another webinar uh, that, uh, that you can check out. It's called Benefits of a Neighborhood Website. And all you have to do is email us and we can send you the link directly. Thank you very much for being with us today. As Grant mentioned at the beginning, uh, there's a 25% uh, promotional code off any service that Parkbench supplies. It's called Rank and it's valid until September the 11th, although I think uh, because today is September the 8th and it was a long weekend, we might be able to extend that into early next week as well. Um, so definitely get in touch with us. Uh, you can uh, use the email support at parkbench.com or you can email Grant directly at grantfs at parkbench.com. Uh, get in touch with us and see what we can do for you. Uh, we'll, we're here to help. Thank you very much.